So let's look at some more post effects and we will start with the lens distortion as it's the simplest here. So let me drop down, not a node. Let me drop down the lens distortion node. Um, and this simulates the subtle uh, bend at the edges of the lens. And it, again, it's an artistic choice, which is mostly evident on wide angle lenses. Now, the reason I say it's an artistic choice is because a lot of photographers and filmmakers remove this from their footage or their photos. So you can choose to add it if you like. Let me just drop this in. And the option I'm looking for here, if we go to the, the right hand side, is the PF track within the lens distortion model. Now it's currently set to undistort and that's of course because generally that's what people want to do. But in our case we want to distort this. And now we can use some of these options here just to bend this in. Awesome. Afterwards, we would need to crop this. So if you were planning on doing this to your um, to your final image, you would need to render a little bit bigger than what you need to take into account uh, this cropping here. So now you can see we do get a subtle bend around the base. Let me just turn that on and off so you can see this guy here. And you get this subtle warping at the edges of the frame. So at Axis, we use this, uh, depending on the project, we did use it to great effect on Project Overdrive for Riot. And that's because a lot of these scenes were in the anime style and in the futuristic cyberpunk style. So it made sense to add a kind of um, comic book cyberpunk feel uh, on top of what we had already. Okay, so next up is Film Grain. And again, we have a very simple node. I can just drop this in, Film Grain. And I'll just add this here. Let me remove the lens distortion. And you can see it comes in very heavy. So we can control this by using or changing the size. We can make it quite small. And we can also reduce the strength. The Ideally, what would happen is you would have a good reference for what it was that you're trying to achieve. But between the, the size and the strength, uh, that gets you most of the way there. And then the roughness just increases the contrast, but we don't need this. The other thing to bear in mind is we can time lock this. So what normally happens if I go through the time slider here is you can see the noise changes and that is what should happen. But if we time lock this, then everything is stuck to the same frame, but we don't necessarily want that because it's not uh, realistic. Okay, so that's the film grain, quite a quick one. And next up, we'll take a look at chromatic aberration. Now, Michael Vorberg, the guy that we were talking about previously, who was kind enough to pass over his lens flares, um, also has a, a chromatic aberration that we can use. So let me go to this X chroma fuse and drop this in. And this does a couple of things. It introduces chromatic aberration at the edges here. And it also lets us uh, add a little bit of uh, distortion to the frame in general. So it's quite a sophisticated plugin. It comes with um, Michael Vorberg's lens flares. So feel free to use this. But whilst we're here, if you don't have access to this plugin, let's take a look at how we can quickly make one for ourselves. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop down a channel boolean and plug this in. And in this case, we want red to be red and everything else to be black. Okay, and then we also want to do the same for green and blue. So 
So now we have separated these out, we want to add them back together using another channel boolean. And I'll set this to add and do nothing. And once again, same thing for this guy. And the blue channel. Okay, so we're back to the beginning. So to split up these channels, I want to just add a directional blur. Let me just add a directional blur. And I want to set this to zoom so let me plug this in here to the blue channel and the red channel and set this to zoom and on the red i'll increase it a little bit on the positive side and on the blue let me increase it a bit on the negative side cool so this gives us that little subtle break up at the edges here but less so in the middle we can also if we want to finish this add a general directional blur just to add a little bit of warping to the edges but i tone this right down to something very small just to add a little bit of distortion okay so that's obviously if we wanted to add a little bit by ourselves um, but we do have that plugin it's very good The last thing I wanted to mention is just some of the vignetting and everyone will be familiar with this as a concept, it's uh, very common. And as a quick way to add this, we just need an ellipse stretched out on one axis. We put that through a background node. Let me set this to the right resolution. We merge this on top. And I'll go back to the ellipse and invert this and then increase the soft edge. Let me just disable the chroma and lessen this a little because it's a bit strong. But you can see what we get here, a little bit of vignetting around the edges of the frame. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover here in this um, post effects video. And next up, we'll take a look at the differences between um, 3D depth of field and the depth of field that we can achieve within Fusion. Thanks.